So here we are, we're in a community park. Yes, and there's literally 9,999 uh, 9 other parks in Irvine. Yes, we can't really verify that for a fact. I've counted them all. But it isn't far from the truth. And what we're going to do today is we are going to give you a full vlog tour. We're going to show you all of Irvine. Irvine is a big city, and I feel like Sean and I, we do have a little bit, I, I feel like I romanticized Irvine a little bit because when we lived in Irvine, I, the world was a simpler place. This was pre-2020. <laughs> <laughs> so Irvine is a great city. But Life I, just made sense. Yes, I feel like we, we romanticized it a little bit, but Irvine is a great city, and what we're going to do today is we're going to show you all of Irvine, all of the different neighborhoods, sort of the pros and cons of each neighborhood. So you're going to see things that you really like about Irvine. You're going to see things that you don't like about Irvine. So if you're thinking about living here, it's going to help you maybe decide, okay, I want to, you know, focus on this part of Irvine or that part of Irvine. And that's what we're going to do right now. So stay tuned. What's up, everybody? I'm Sean Dazad. And I'm Courtney Dazad, and we're with Keller Williams Realty right here in Orange County, California. And if you want to learn everything about what it's like to live here in Orange County, press on the subscribe button and press on the little bell so that you're notified every time that we upload a new video. And we are licensed realtors in the state of California. Well, actually, I am a licensed realtor. Sean is a licensed broker. And also, Sean, he's on. He's the one you want to talk to. He, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, so obviously, while we love making these videos, don't, don't we? Mm -hmm, yes, it is fun, actually. But you know what we love more? Hmm. We love to help you with your real estate needs. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in Orange County, what you want to do is you want to give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. Or you can reach out to us via WhatsApp. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back. So here we are at the Spectrum. The Spectrum is really the center of entertainment for Irvine as well as South County. So all of the cities, you know, south of Irvine um, in Orange County. And let's have Sean explain what is the Spectrum. The Spectrum is the crown jewel of South Orange County. This is where we all go to like congregate. Like you will find Courtney and I here at least once a week, seemingly. It's kind of amazing how often we do find ourselves in this place because it kind of has everything. Well, one, it's super centrally located, right? It's where the 405 and the five freeways merge. And so it's, it, so, you know, obviously you know, those are two major freeways in all of Southern California. And on top of that, you just got so much shopping. It's an amazing outdoor mall. You have carousels, you have Ferris wheels, you have Nordstrom's, Macy's, you know, like Apple store. I mean, uh, like, like a huge movie theater. You kind of have a bit of everything here. Plus the, also the dining is also really good here too. So it just kind of has a lot to offer. And another thing the Spectrum offers, we talk about the Spectrum as the mall, but the Spectrum also has tons of businesses around here. Tons of companies are headquartered here. Tons of people work here. And it's a big reason why people love to live in Irvine because it is so close to, Irvine is the seat of commerce in Orange County. And it is a big reason why people like to live in Irvine because you're right by where you work on many occasions. So if you're noticing right now, it is actually overcast. So no, no, this is not in the depths of winter. We are actually in late spring, as a matter of fact. This is being recorded in the middle of May. And this is a thing that Southern California gets. You get this kind of gloom that hits, like, you know, June gloom is a thing. So it's not, you know, it's not like from the first, like, the first moment the sun rises that it's, totally sunny actually it's the, you have this overcast it does burn off by the end of you know by you know probably like late morning i would say but you do kind of get this nice little reprieve so it starts off nice and cool it does warm up but then it gets you know very nice again that's why we live here right that's true and whenever i see the blackberry building i'm always thinking to myself i thought blackberry's not a company anymore is it i thought that they actually you know, did away with it completely. I mean, I, I mean, maybe they just haven't gotten around to 
actually removing. Uh, again, maybe they're still on the lease too. I mean, for maybe urban companies like, well, we're going to keep your name on the building so you can keep on paying rent, basically. And probably the greatest thing about the Spectrum, I know it's like tons of headquarters. I know it's some of the best shopping you can get, but really what matters is that, that there's a Costco right here. And that building right there, that is the Taco Bell headquarters. So here we are, we're at the Great Park. Now this is a very large plot of land here, actually. And this is one of the few areas where we're getting a lot of new developments because in Orange County, for the most part, we, there's not in mass, not a ton of new development here. Most of it, and if there is any new development, it's mostly on the fringes. Yeah, so the Great Park, it's one of the few areas in, you know, in centrally located Orange County where you can get new construction. We really like um, the neighborhoods around here. Um, they've got a lot of really cool amenities, um, a lot of really cool houses. If you've ever watched our channel before, you've probably maybe seen us bag on the actual Great Park itself, the actual park, because it was sold to the people of Orange County. It was going to be this unbelievable park that people would come from, you know, all over the world to come see it. It's kind of going to be like Central Park in New York City. It never quite, you know, became that. But I will give credit to the builders around the Great Park. There's some really cool um, communities that you can buy into if you know, you're looking for a really cool master plan community with lots of cool amenities. And I will say, the actual park itself is nice. It's not like it's a bad park by any stretch of the imagination. It's just one of those things where they, you know, they promised a lot and didn't, you know, just didn't, you know, they didn't deliver to that extent. So I guess if, we were, if the expectations were a little bit lower, you know, that, you know, so I mean, obviously anyone that's moving here, like, you know, you're going, okay, well, this is actually a nice place. You have, you know, tons of different, you know, fields where, you know, people, people playing soccer, they're playing volleyball, like there's volleyball stadiums, actually, there's hockey rinks. There's a lot of stuff here. It's just that, again, Central Park, <laughs> it's going to, when you're, when you're trying to compare yourself to Central Park in New York City, that's one of those, like, you know, amazing parks in the entire world, right? I mean, and that's kind of one of those things where, they, you know, they just raise the bar so high. And so that, that's our, my biggest beef with it. Yeah, what a shock. Politicians making promises that don't come to fruition. Oops. And I can't believe it. And I'm sure that that's only a California phenomenon. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm laughing. Uh, <laughs> we're equal opportunity of disliking politicians, no matter who you are. And I do actually believe that the Anaheim Ducks, Ducks do actually practice here at this, this ice skating rink. I think um, Wallet Hub, they did a survey. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but they actually named Irvine as one of the most family-friendly um, cities in the entire country. And I think one of the things that they use to decide if it's family-friendly is how many ice skating rinks are in the city. That was actually, you know, one of the barometers. So obviously Irvine has got a pretty big ice skating facility, which is a little bit strange for Southern California because obviously we're, we're not really into hockey since it never gets cold here. So I know we we bag on the Great Park a lot, you know, we're just kind of making fun of it and, and making fun of, uh, you know, just politics because <laughs> how can you not? Yes. you got to make light of, you know, heavy topics. But anyway, the, the material is endless when it comes to politics. The material is endless. Well, the politicians provide us with endless material. Politics, huh? Yes, and we're not even comedians. Um, <laughs> imagine how much material there'd be if we were comedians. But that's no, beside the point. Good. But we think we're funny. <laughs> well, I certainly think Sean is funny, but uh, I'm obviously married to him, so there's got to be a reason I married him, right? <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> Regardless, back to the point. So one cool thing about the Great Park that we're actually really looking forward to is that they are building Wild Rivers, which is a water park. And it actually used to be a water park when I was a kid. I would drive up, well, not me, but my dad would drive me and my sister up from San Diego, where we, where, where I grew up, to, to Irvine to go to Wild Rivers, which is a water park. And they tore it down a while ago, but now it's coming back. So Sean and I are both very much looking forward to going to Wild Rivers again. And it's nice because Irvine can get hot. 
So it's a good spot to have a water park. So one of the nice things about Irvine is that it is obviously, it's a huge, it's what one master plan community after another. It's very well planned. And one great thing about Irvine is it has big major thoroughfares. Like for right now, we are on Jeffrey. And Jeffrey is a major thoroughfare. So, you know, if you need to get from point A to point B, there's lots of, you don't necessarily have to use the freeway and it helps alleviate traffic. And Jeffrey is actually where um, one of the times that I was caught by an Irvine police officer jaywalking and, you know, screamed at and yelled at uh, is actually on Jeffrey because I was crossing Jeffrey without waiting for the light. Um, because Irvine is famously known as the safest city in America, 16 years and counting, according to FBI data, for a city that is 250,000 or greater. So, you know, if you are doing something like jaywalking, as I was, you might be pulled over as I, well, pulled over, stopped, and basically told, I don't even remember what he said, but he basically said that he was, he was very, very angry, let's just put it that way. <laughs> So here we are, we are in, it's called, this is called Jeffrey Trail, and it is a little trail system. It actually is quite long. Um, when Sean and I lived in Irvine, on one of the many occasions, <laughs> um, I was actually training for a marathon, and I trained for it here. And it's a very popular area of Irvine, just, you know, we actually have done holiday photos here with our family, and then the communities around here are super cute. Um, you know, some of the newer construction in Irvine, yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about some of them here. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So Irvine has, a, it's a definitely a mix of not old because anything, every, anything Irvine is pretty much 1970s and newer, so not old, old, but like basically, you know, 70s and to present day, right? Whereas, you know, and so basically around this area, you have stuff that's built in the 2000s. And so it's, it's just kind of, you know, again, newer architecture, newer kind of feels to the communities. Mm -hmm. And again, tons of parks kind of situated. Well, I was, we always call Irvine the land of 10,000 parks because yeah. there's parks seemingly around every corner. Yeah, I mean, this trail system right here is just an example example of just how Irvine is so well planned, just so peaceful. I mean, people just are walking, you know, enjoying themselves all the time. It's just such a beautiful little community. And you wouldn't know it, but like where we are right now <laughs> in this park here, what's funny is that Jeffrey, which is, again, as you alluded to before, it's a huge thoroughfare. Like it's six lanes across, sometimes eight. And like, it, and so it's, it's right over that hill right there so it's not like we're you know it's not like it's far away and so it's just super convenient and like mm -hmm. and there's and there seems to be shopping centers like you know strip malls all you know where it's it kind of where it's not too far away from these you know residential communities so it's like yeah where you know so you don't want to go too far to the grocery store yeah oh and i'll show you this is where i'll show you the trail i used to run on this thing literally <laughs> every day training for my marathon and I had no sleep because our son was I think one years old had? <laughs> yeah. he still doesn't sleep very well but I literally although you don't don't feel it. you just yeah, go to sleep true. and you're that's out true. I'm <laughs> having to deal with the, the let's, fallout let's just say because I'm such a deep sleeper the kids don't come to me in the middle of the night <laughs> they come to shop <laughs> yes <laughs> but anyways I would be training for this on zero sleep <laughs> needless to say the marathon didn't go too well <laughs> <laughs> but here's the trail. It's just so pretty. We can we can show. And we're just showing you the whole... I mean, it's just such a peaceful little spot. And honestly, Irvine has so many places like this. We can't even show you all of them. So here we are in Woodbury. Like, this is one so, of the... So we're next to the Jeffrey Trail, just yes. to give you some Yeah, so Jeffrey is right that way. So that way is Jeffrey, so it's really close by. And again, super convenient access to the five freeway. And what I like about, you know, Woodbury is that it's a newish community. Actually, we can pan around and just kind of show you some of the homes here. Uh, let's do that. So just to kind of give you some ideas as far as, you know, these homes are built, you know, early 2000s, basically. And uh, it's a mix. So you have, um, in Woodbury, you have basically, you have single family detached residences, and you have townhomes and that kind of thing. So, and the prices range, you know, dramatically depending on what you're getting. Townhomes and it could get you, you know, that 900,000, 1 million-ish range. And then houses, 
two to three million dollar range, depending on the size, because some of these homes, you know, they're almost 5,000 square feet. So some of them are pretty big. Now I will say, you know, like driving through these neighborhoods is amazing. However, I'm noticing a common theme here, and that is trash cans are out. It's seemingly like Courtney's superpower here is to summon the trash cans. It always seems to be trash day. Oh, damn your pop! And, and no matter, we film different times of the week, so it's not like we're always on a specific day. But somehow, some way, without fail, it is trash day when we're doing these vlog tours. Yeah, it's, it's really quite incredible. I mean, if you want a superpower, I don't know if that's the superpower <laughs> I want. I, I, I would prefer something, you know, being able to pick lottery ticket numbers or something like that. But apparently my superpower is always being present when it's trash day in whatever city of the world that I am located in. Yeah, great. I will say that, you know, kind of a general theme rule of thumb here, unless you're in these super ritzy communities like, you know, Shady Canyon, which does have huge lots and it is a relatively new build, I will say that in general in Irvine and most places around the world for that matter, the newer the construction, the smaller the lot. That's just kind of just kind of the thing, right? It's just, you know, people, you know, these builders figure out very creative ways to squeeze more dwellings into the same, like, acreage. Yeah, so what that means is that with these newer buildings or these newer builds, you're not going to have as much of a backyard. That's just kind of a fact of life. So here we are. We're in Northwood. So this is another community within Irvine. And actually what's co kind of cool about Northwood is that you have, um, it's a little bit of, actually it's it's pretty established, I would say. Like this is, this area here, you have stuff that's built in the 70s. You have stuff that's built in the late 90s. And so it's, it's, it's not like new, new, but some of these spots within Northwood are really, really cool. And what I like about Northwood is that, one, Northwood High School is actually ranked on niche.com. I think it's the second ranked high school in Irvine, which Irvine Unified School District is already, again, according to niche.com, one of the highest ranked school districts in the country. I mean, it is, you know, an incredible school system. And Northwood High, so the two granddaddies of, well, I mean, it's, it's the, the, the main, like the, the highest ranked high school here is University High School, and number two is Northwood High School. And since we are in Northwood, uh, one little restaurant that we love that's in Northwood is called Soul House. Um, it's actually one of our favorite restaurants in Orange County. So if you're looking for, you know, just a nice place to get some lunch, get some dinner, Soul House is really good. So within Northwood, this is one of your very common neighborhoods. It's a very run-of-the-mill like, you know, like run-of-the-mill, like Irvine neighborhood. This stuff was built in the 70s, and these homes, they, they're priced in the lowish one millions, I guess, for a detached single-family residence. But again, you're, you know, again, just, so it's for Irvine, that's actually on the more affordable side for a, for a single-family residence here. Okay, so here we are. This is also within Northwood. This is called Northwood Point. Super cute community here, like sub-community within Northwood. So what, what I like about Northwood Point is that these homes, they range in different sizes as far as, like, they, they actually get pretty large, but they're also built in the more than 90s. So... The, like the architecture is a little bit, you know, cleaner, more a little more contemporary, and the prices here are in more in the two million dollar range somewhere in that vicinity, and also a lot of like a lot of gated communities within here. Okay, so we're here in Orchard Hills. This is definitely on the more recent development side in, or in Irvine, basically. And what I will say about Orchard Hills is that beautiful community. However. Again, this is one of the things we just want to be real about, it, right? So you know, we get calls all the time from people like asking about, okay, fire danger, fire danger, because they see the, you know, the, the, the headlines. Now, in general, in Orange County, fires really aren't much of a thought at all. I mean, it's just, it doesn't really come up. Now, it doesn't mean that fires don't happen, but very few structures are ever lost. Now, having said that, we actually had a fire recently where it was this weird, quick little fire took place in a canyon and then all of a sudden you know like 20 20 structures actually like you know were lost now that's super rare that doesn't like that I'm, I'm not even sure the last time that's actually happened but it's just one of those freak things but we can't say that it can't happen right so there and so if you want to increase your likelihood of fire danger of course the closer you are to natural brush and canyons and that kind of thing, obviously the higher likelihood of some fire issues. And Orchard Hills kind of butts up right against the Cleveland National Forest. And so 
you know, there may be times where, let's say, not even a structure is lost, but maybe they might have an evacuation potentially because there was a fire burning like that took place. So that's one of the things we want to be real about, you know, just, just so you know. And here we are. We're on Culver, baby, one of our favorite streets in all of Orange County, and Sean's going to tell you why. So this street, this street is like a time warp. It's like Back to the Future, Irvine style, because you drive down the street and somehow you are beating freeways, you're beating everyone else if they're taking an alternate route. Somehow you're going literally, like you're, you're slow, not only slowing down time, you're going backwards in time. Yes, Culver is a good option. Um, one of the things we always say is, you know, South County, Irvine and South, and really a lot of, even North County, they, there's a lot of big thoroughfares that make it so that you can get around the county easier than let's say maybe LA or San Diego County. It makes it so that you can alleviate some of the traffic pressure. And Culver is one of our favorite roads for avoiding the freeway. Um, we never take the 55 because we will just use Culver instead. Uh, and you know, key point, if you do decide to come live here in Orange County and in Irvine, avoid the 55 at all costs. Just go down Culver and take the 405 instead it will just be magically so much faster but yes culver is a dream so here we are we're in heritage square it is one of the many strip malls that you will get in irvine because irvine is so well planned you know there's seemingly anywhere you're like oh well there should be a target there should be a strip mall there is a strip mall there there is a target irvine is so convenient you become very soft as a person when you live in irvine because you are everything is right at your fingertips and you end up you know if you're you have to go more than five minutes away for something you you view that as an inconvenience because that's just how irvine is yeah and then what what also we love okay so in heritage square what like just here there obviously this one little strip mall you have not, like a lot of a variety of restaurants and also just places to shop so for instance Mitsu market is this Japanese marketplace really it's really cool like Japanese like kind of grocery store slash like dining area and then on top of that like we have super Irvine which like they have okay so they have Persian food right? it's more Persian centric so you buy so it's actually good size it's like a like a grocery store like a super like a grocery yeah like a grocery store but for like Persian centric and then they also have a really cool cafe where again if you're on the go kind of like cook some nice good food so they have some really good Persian food uh, for what it is, and then and then actually Caspian Restaurant, which is right next to it, is actually more like of a formal Persian dining dining area. Yeah, and then, like so, Heritage Square is kind of like em emblematic of Irvine itself, right? So this is a melting pot. What I, one of the things I love most about Irvine is that you get such diversity in people, cuisine, culture. It's just really cool. Where it's just like you get a, a little bit of taste of everything, and I just I mean, again I love that so much about Irvine. So here we are, we're in Culver Plaza, and this is, again, yet another another example of just the amazing different foods you can either shop for or eat. And so one of the very popular places is 99 Ranch Market, where, again, just really good, just Asian food as far as just great shopping here. So here we are, we're in West Park. People, what people really like about West Park is that it is relatively, so it's like kind of like on the northern edge of Irvine here. So what's nice is that you're closer to the airport, you're closer to LA for that matter. So you're, you're again, you're just closer where all the action is as far as like you're more central in Orange County. Because Irvine itself is actually a pretty decent sized landmass. So like, you know, if you're in the spectrum, you're much more, I would say, associated with South Orange County than than Central to Orange County, and whereas West Park, again, you're much more closer, you're much closer to Central Orange County. And then what you have here, these homes, this, these developments, I would say are built early-ish, mid-90s in, in general, maybe like late 80s as well. And like, you know, detached homes here, they kind of range in size, you know, 1,500 square feet to 2,500 square feet as a general rule of thumb. And of course, there's, uh, you know, there's exceptions to that. And I would say the price range is about, you know, between like a one and a quarter to one and a half million dollars, give or take, depending on the property. So here we are. We are in Woodbridge. Woodbridge, which is the OG of Irvine's master plan communities. And Sean's going to explain a little bit about what Woodbridge is. Yeah, Woodbridge, okay, is always near and dear to my heart here because my mom, like well, growing up, my mom lived here. And I just have like these warm, fuzzy feelings about Woodbridge. And it's got so many really cool amenities here. They have the lagoon. And... 
like um, on top of that, they just have it's just really cool. Like, you have West Yale Loop and East Yale Loop. Basically, Yale Loop itself ba makes a like a circle around Woodbridge for the most part, and then uh, and and within it, you just have again these properties were built more or less mostly I would say in the '70s, give or take. Also, what I love about Woodbridge is that its location is really good. Like it's basically it's right off the 405 freeway. And, uh, you know, between like Culver and Jeffrey, and it's just a great spot. And so it's super easy and convenient to get to. And like price wise, actually, it's pretty reasonable here, too. Yeah, I would say what I like most about Woodbridge is its central location within Irvine. And then because it is old, you know, it's on the older side for Irvine, I feel like the prices um, you get more for your dollar in Woodbridge. I almost feel like Woodbridge is kind of like a secret almost. Like people don't really think of Woodbridge as a, you know, a, a place to go in Irvine, but I actually really, really like Woodbridge. So here we are, we're passing Woodbridge High School. Again, another very highly ranked school in Irvine. I will say what Woodbridge does have going for it though is that while it's obviously academics are great, according to com, it's athletics is also usually really good too. Mm. And Courtney's of course gonna rub it in because <laughs> Woodbridge is the site of one of the largest like cross-country invitationals west of the Mississippi, and she loves to brag about, oh, who, who broke a course record at Woodbridge, like the Woodbridge Invitational? Obviously, it wasn't me. I got like the third fastest time that day, but Courtney actually broke the course record, I guess. What? <laughs> I don't love to brag about that. What is Sean saying? She does. I, I would say that I'm very uh, embarrassed about that. <laughs> she brought it up to me. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> no, I didn't. So we're in West Park Plaza right now, and this is bringing back very good memories for Sean and I because there's actually a Mandarin Immersion Montessori school here. It's one of a couple, actually, in the Irvine area. Another one um, is Angie's Children House is another Mandarin Immersion preschool. We actually sent our kids to these preschools, and we just we just went by, and oh, we have so many memories of when they were so little. And um, yes, our kids, uh, they actually do speak um, um, fluent Mandarin. Um, native Mandarin. Well, yeah, so they, uh, I don't know, I mean, I don't know how to speak Mandarin, but our friends tell us that they don't have an accent um, when they speak. Um, I don't know, just when I was pregnant with my daughter, I decided that she was going to speak fluent Mandarin, and that's, so that's what we did. And um, there's actually also a charter school in Irvine. So this is from pre-K on up, I think, to fifth or sixth grade um, that also is Mandarin immersion. And it's actually the only charter school in the Irvine Unified School District. Um, but yeah, so if you are looking for a Mandarin immersion uh, schooling, it is here from preschool, which obviously you have to pay for, all the way up through, I believe, fifth or sixth grade. It's a new program, um, but yeah, a lot of people were very excited when that started. So one of the things that Irvine is often criticized for is that because there's so many master planned communities, it, a lot of these communities, they kind of, it's kind of just a, a different shade of beige, right? They, it all looks the same. It's very, you know, just, there's no charm. There's no character. But one of my favorite little communities that kind of defies this is called Columbus Grove. It's very small, but I just love, even though it's master plan community and it's granted very small. I mean, I imagine, what is there, probably like a hundred homes in here. But I just love the architecture of these um, particular homes. And I feel like the architect did a great job of even though it's master planned, they look different and they look like it's organic growth. So we'll show you what that looks like right now. So um, these homes in, in, in Columbus Grove, basically, these are homes that are built in the latish aughts of the 2000s. So like 2007 or so, give or take. And then um, what you have here is that you have a mix of condos, townhomes, and single family residences. Single family residences, I would say go for the high-ish, like the mid-ish high um, one millions. And Columbus Grove is right by Sweet Shade Park. It's one of the only parks in Irvine, I think, that actually has shading. I mean, they had the foresight to put some covering on the park because it does get hot in Irvine. Um, it can sometimes be, you know, in the high 90s and in the summer and when you don't have anything to do, let's say if you have kids, 
going to the park can be a little bit overbearing when it's a little bit like that. But Sweet Shade Park is nice because you can actually have some shade. Now we're about to turn left onto Jamboree as we head towards the airport area of Irvine. And Jamboree is another big thoroughfare in Irvine, another big street that you can use to get away from the freeway. Although I will say Jamboree can get pretty backed up. Um, so here, uh, Sean can talk about Jamboree. Yeah, Jamboree is one of these, honestly, like, it's kind of shocking because we were on the I-10 freeway, right? So this is an interstate freeway uh, that runs all the way from L.A., basically, all the way to Florida, right? So from California to Florida. So we were on, on that, actually, over the weekend. And uh, there are parts of it where it's only a four-lane freeway for such a big, you know, like, integral artery. In Jamboree, right here we're driving through, this is eight lanes across. I mean, it's kind of insane to think about how big some of these roads are in, in Orange County. So here we are, we're in the airport area. This is the area that like, was right next to John Wayne Airport. And w this area doesn't have so much, uh, you know, single family residences. These are much more so uh, condos, really, and, uh, and, and some town townhomes as well. But you, what you do have here is you have actually high rises. So Orange County, we don't have a lot of high rise structures. And we're blessed here to have this, the, high, the tallest residential structures in all of the world. Sean's being facetious. We have, <laughs> there's a few high rises that you can actually live in here, but I wouldn't say they're that high. What are they, 11 stories, I would say? I think depend, uh, depending on which one. So the plaza is around 11-ish stories. The marquee is probably like more about 17, 18 stories tall. So, I mean, obviously these aren't super tall structures for Orange County though super tall. I actually remember a time, this was pre-2008, and the talk of the town in Orange County was how Orange County was, you know, going to become this high-rise place where all oh, you could have a ton of high-rise living, kind of like downtown LA, but that, that never really happened. And then we're at Park Place here, and what what's nice about here is that you have a Mother's Market. Now, for those of you who don't know mother, what Mother's Market is, it basically is a natural grocer, I guess, is the best way I could put it. So you have organic foods, you, you have holistic stuff, like it's it's good. And, they, and it's actually a chain. They have several mother's markets throughout Orange County. Yeah, and they have a nice restaurant in there. Um, and I would say that the one knock against mothers is if you do eat meat, it doesn't really have any like grass-fed beef or anything like that. It does have some chicken. Actually, I do think they have grass-fed beef now. Oh, they it's do? It's limited for sure. Oh, okay. Well, Sean's the shopper in our family. I, I rarely ever go in these stores. Um, <laughs> I eat. The only the only thing I shopping I do is at the farmer's market, the Irvine Farmer's Market, which actually, because we're not filming this on a Saturday, um, you won't see, but I can show you some footage right now. So the Irvine Farmer's Market is at Marinus Church, and um, which is right on the border of Newport Beach, and it is the biggest farmer's market in Orange County. You just have so much um, variety there in terms of what you can get. I'm literally there every Saturday. You can just honestly just whatever you want, you honestly can get it there, and it's year-round. It's a great, great market. And then I will make a joke because we just passed by Panini Grill. And <laughs> Sean, he is obsessed with Panini Grill. Any anytime you know we're anywhere, where do you want to eat? Let's eat at Panini Grill. I honestly don't understand his obsession, but if we're with our kids, then they will agree with him. So I'm always outnumbered. So we'll probably be eating at Panini Grill. It's good. I don't know what to tell you. So here we are. We have we're at UC Irvine, and so one. Okay, so this is one and a, a pretty large employment center for Irvine, therefore for Orange County itself. But second, UC Irvine is actually a really highly ranked school. In fact, it's the top 10 public school in the entire country. So that's pretty, you know, so it's pretty impressive. It's right in your own backyard here is what you have in UC Irvine. And apparently, according to Sierra Magazine, it's the number one cool school in the country. And this is a top 10 school, according to U.S. News and World Report, um, a top 10 public school. And then I think it's number 35 or something out of all schools, according to U.S. News and World Report. And the reason why Sean um, <laughs> makes me start talking about Sierra Magazine, cool school. Uh, Sean and I actually went to UC Irvine. That's actually where we met. Um, 
but I wouldn't call it a cool school, mostly because there's no football team. So I feel like there's not as much school spirit may maybe than at like a UCLA or like a UC Berkeley because you have football there. And then I would say that a lot of kids that live in Orange County will end up going to UC Irvine. So it's, it's a little bit like a commuter school almost. So a lot of people don't even live on campus. Um, so you don't get, like, for example, my sister went to Cornell. And so everyone, you know, lived on campus. And it was, you had more of a, a college feel. I would say UC Irvine, because so many people don't live on campus, it doesn't have that feel. But regardless, it's a great school, a source of so much, um, you know, job growth, so much scientific innovation within the community. A lot of people that do come here from out of town end up staying in Orange County. Um, it's got a great law school, business school. I mean, it's it's honestly a great school, but cool school. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and we are right next. So obviously. Um, University High School is right next to UC Irvine, and University High School is honest is usually neck and neck with Troy High School, which is in Fullerton, right next to Cal State Fullerton, for the top public schools um, according to niche.com and other rankings as well um, for Orange County. Sometimes people might get confused though because there is the Orange County School of the Arts which is also a very highly ranked public school but we don't really count that because you actually have to audition and like get in and it's not really a school that anyone can go to. You have to be accepted so we don't really include that unless you know you're really good at some art and you want to audition and get in and like that's cool but obviously you know university high school if you live in the zone then you can go it doesn't have any auditions to get in so. although i was really good at finger painting so i probably could have gone into the orange county school of the arts yeah <laughs> let's just say i did take an art class at uc irvine and the way they graded it was if you turn in all the all your work you automatically get an a minus and then you know then whether you get an a minus a or a plus that's how good your art is let's just say i got an a minus so here we are we're in turtle rock this is one of my favorite areas in all of irvine i really love this area it's like so it's right next to uc irvine for one but here the topography is nice so a lot of irvine is pretty flat and with that, you have, it's kind of like a Brady Bunch kind of feel. So you have your house in the middle, think of a grid. So you have a house in the middle, and you have three neighbors in front of you, three neighbors behind you, and then two neighbors on the side, one on each side of you. Whereas in Turtle Rock, uh, so you, it never feels that private, right? I mean, to, the, to an extent. Whereas in Turtle Rock, the topography is kind of hilly. So you have views here, you have, you don't feel like your neighbors are right up next to you. And it's like really, you know, I love how like shady it is. I mean, it's just, it's just so, I just really, love the vibe of Turtle Rock. Like, and, and as far as like, you know, like the properties, how they're built. So there's a lot of, there's condos. There's a lot of actually like townhomes, more like attached duplexes really than townhomes. And then on top of that, you have single family residence, of course. And um, these properties are built, I would say between the seven, 1970s and the late 1990s. And fun fact, Sean has a lot of uncles and aunts who live here. <laughs> And fun fact, one of the main ways to get up into Turtle Rock is a street called Ridgeline. It's a very street, steep hill. Um, and Sean and I, when we used to run cross country at UC Irvine, we would often do workouts up here. And then there's also uh, a little cycling group. I actually don't know if they have it anymore because you know COVID kind of destroyed everything. But there used to be a little cycling group called the Coffee Crew, and we would I used to you know cycle there, and we would go up Bridge Line. It was every Wednesday, I think, at 6 a.m. was where this cycling group would meet. Would meet. Now in, a, in in Turtle Rock area, so I would say the prices range for these homes, and they vary in size pretty dramatically, and depending on whether you're getting a condo uh, and actually a lot of these are attached homes so it's like a, it's like a townhouse well it's actually like a duplex right but it's a part of association but you have a shared wall and some of these homes are like 3,000 square feet each so it's not like they're a small little like thousand square foot dwelling but I would say the prices range in this area and from like a million dollars range for like you know condos and stuff to almost almost four million dollars for, for a house and people do like turtle rock because it is zoned for university high school so um you know some people they just really want to do university high school because it's because of its rankings and this is one of the spots where you are zoned for that so right next to turtle rock we have uh shady canyon this is the most i would say ritzy area in all of irvine i mean and these are some nice something there's some homes 
priced at about at fifty million dollars, right? And so these are these homes are large lots, which is unusual for Irvine. You don't get large lots in general. Newer construction mansions. These are like estate type homes. So if you're looking for, you know, super secure, big homes, and again, they're not all fifty million. Of course, there's definitely prices, you know, priced in the around five million range and up. I would say, but you know, like, but if you want some, you know, if you want that ritzy stuff there like shady uh, shady canyons for you yeah if there are any i would say generally any celebrities that live in orange county i would say they tend to stick to newport beach or laguna beach however there are some that end up in shady canyon i believe jim rome had a place there uh lindsey davenport i think michael chang i could be wrong um but yeah or Dean Kuntz, the author, I think he has two houses in there. So yeah, it's definitely more the, uh, I guess you could call it like the Newport Beach of Irvine. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely the higher, higher priced. So here we are, we're in Turtle Ridge. What's cool about this place is that you're pretty much on the border of Newport Coast. So the 73 freeway pretty much separates Turtle Ridge from Newport Coast. And what you have here, properties built in the early 2000s mostly, and you have, you know, what's nice is that you're, got, you have, the weather for Irvine is really good here because, again, you're super close to Newport Beach. And then also these houses, you have a combination of townhomes and houses. Townhomes are in the low one millions, basically. Houses can range up to about four and a half, five million dollars, depending on the size of the property. And I was talking about the farmer's market earlier, and the farmer's market is right here because uh, Turtle Ridge is right by Mariner's Church, which is where they have the farmer's market every Saturday because they have this huge parking lot. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, just one cool little perk if you decide you want to live in Turtle Ridge because it's literally right by the biggest farmer's market. So here we are. We're in Quail Hill. This is, I, I really like this place a lot because it's super, it's right off the 405 freeway. It's a newer community, and it's actually pretty close it's actually a pretty quick a straight shot to laguna beach too so the weather here is pretty temperate especially for irvine the i, I mean i just love it's a newer build it's just i just really like quail hill a lot one nice thing about quail hill is it is near the hogue irvine which is a hospital um hogue is consistently ranked the uh number one hospital in orange county but that the the main headquarters is in newport beach but what's nice about hogue irvine is that if you do have an emergency, it's usually not that crowded. We've been there, unfortunately, more times than we'd like because we have two little kids and, you know, they tend to have emergencies. And it's been a good place to go um, whenever they do have emergencies because you can tend to be able to get in fairly quickly for an emergency room. Another nice thing about Quail Hill is how close it is to Irvine Spectrum. And then as far as what Quail Hill has, as far as what kind of homes they have, a lot of it's townhomes and single family residences. The prices uh, vary pretty dramatically depending on what you're getting. You know, like like a close to a million uh, starting point uh, for like the townhomes and then houses kind of start at about one and a half million dollars. And then another nice thing is that because the topography here is on the has some hills to it, basically these homes you can you can get homes with views. Not every home does have views, but you can get that option depending. So that's it. That's our video. And again, we are licensed realtors in the state of California. And so what you want to do is, even though we love making these videos, but what we love more is to help you with your real estate needs. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, what you want to do is you want to give us a call shoot us a text or send us an email. Or you can reach out to us via WhatsApp. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back. And, and really, reach out to Sean. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs>